Hey, welcome into Rockdown Detroit Lions, and we are doing player profiles today. Sleepers, my top 10 sleepers. I'm doing my second one, and uh, I'm glad you guys are here to watch this video because the guy that I found and the DB that I'm really starting to like later rounds, Kamal Hayden. 6'1", 197 pounds. Guy is uh, fast enough, 4'4", 40, out of Tennessee. Has a great backstory. He's a Michigan native. Matter of fact, Rogue River, Michigan. Uh, to be exact. And uh, look, he started his college career going the Juco route. Uh, Independence Community College battled his way through the pandemic, ended up missing a season in 2020 as the school canceled the football program. So he entered the portal, ended up getting uh, an offer by Auburn, accepted it, and then re-entered the portal again. And that is how he found his way onto the Tennessee Balls football program, June of 2021. Currently, this guy is is slotted as a fifth-round pick in this year's uh, NFL draft. But, man, did he have a breakout season in 2023. Uh, let's go over some of his attributes, uh, some of the things that I saw on film. And then at the end of this video, for about three and a half minutes or so, uh, I've got some highlights that I put together for you. And that's how we'll finish. So, look, this guy's pretty solid. Uh, very solid in zone coverage assignments. And he excels in, in man press. Uh, I, I love his ability, both sides. Um, I love what this guy can do on the field. Finish the season, 90.5 coverage grade, 90.5. 90s do not come very often, uh, but he grabbed one. He's ranked first among all SEC DBs and fifth in the nation per PFF in 2023. Uh, clearly, Tennessee, uh, you know, th this was their best defensive player, you know, in the secondary. Uh, and this is exactly what the Lions need, uh, exactly what the Lions need on the outside covering the X receiver or as the extra cornerback in dime and nickel formations. Uh, he's got above uh, average tracking and downfield uh, ball skills, which you're going to see in these highlights. I mean, this guy, he can grab anything out of the air. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm surprised he's not a receiver. Very, very solid hand-eye coordination. Smooth hip transition. I call it the flip and run. I mean, this guy can flip his hips and get moving uh, north or south, which, whichever way he needs to go, and he does it quickly. Uh, very agile feet. Like I said, fluid hips. He mirrors the quickness uh, of his opponent, and he changes direction underneath very, very effortlessly. Uh, he covers a lot of ground in a hurry, um, which, which is nice because when you're breaking on a route, if you're baiting the quarterback, he can bait and then bounce, and he'll be right there to pick off the ball. He has the strength uh, and tenacity, really, to, to pop the, you know, these wide receivers at the line, uh, jam the receiver, whatever you want to call it. And then he's, he's often winning those battles. Uh, he, he loves to get up and, and get aggressive and get inside, you know, the receiver's mind a little bit. And, and it, it all shows up on the tape, man. Uh, I love it. Love this kid. Anticipation and awareness are probably his best attributes, to be honest with you. And, and again, that'll show up in the tape in some of these highlights. He reads routes and anticipates throws very well. Uh, like I said, baiting the quarterback, he's very good at it. He knows where uh, the first down marker is. And he stays in front to prevent the, the completion uh, or forces a turnover on downs by making the tackle. Super aware in the red zone. Uh, the guy is looking for opportunities in the red zone to make a splash play. And speaking of tackling, though, he has the physicality you want and, and that you want to see when coming up in the box. And he's not afraid to come up in the box and mix it up. He's not afraid to come up, you know, and make the tackle, take on the running back, the tight end. It doesn't matter. Someone coming over the middle. He's going to come up and pop you. And you're going to see that in the tape, too. Uh, he definitely flashes the ability to be a big-time hitter. Things change in the NFL. Guys are bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, but that's a mindset, right? If you're not afraid to do it, then it's probably not going to change. He's more than likely going to, you know, take the, you know, opportunity where it is, where it exists, uh, and be smart, you know, as far as, you know, which guys he should come up in the box and and take on and which ones, you know, maybe he needs to, to tackle uh, a little bit differently. But very aggressive, creates fumbles, uh, likes to punch the ball out and uh, uses his fists wisely. He's constantly trying to punch the ball out and create a turnover somehow. All right, so let's look at this guy's last three seasons. In 2021, as a freshman, he appeared in six games, logged 261 snaps, recorded 15 tackles, uh, and added four, uh, four stops. In coverage, though, he notched three pass breakups, one interception, and a quarterback rating when targeted of 91.2. I know what you're thinking. Not the greatest, right? I mean, Guys are completing, you know, a lot of balls thrown his way. Just wait, it gets better. 
in 2022 as a sophomore, he played in eight games, 465 snaps. So almost double what he did in his freshman season, 35 tackles, seven assists, 12 stops. And in coverage, he totaled uh, two pass breakups, two interceptions, and a quarterback rating when targeted, 69.7. That is a huge jump in production. So he lo- lowered his uh, quarterback rating when targeted by, you know, about 22 points, which is incredible. But in 2023, this guy darn near jumped out the gym with how he was playing. As a junior, he played in seven games, 311 snaps, uh, chalked up 18 tackles, six assists, and five stops in seven games, mind you. And in coverage, he forced six pass breakups, three interceptions, and gave up the most elite quarterback rating I've ever seen in my life, seven. Seven. Like, that's unheard of. I've never seen anything like this before, uh, ever. Devon Witherspoon probably had the best quarterback uh, ratings when targeted that I've seen in a very long time. What this guy did in his junior season, uh, that's insane. Uh, So overall, when you average his three seasons, or his last three seasons, 31.7 during his college career, I mean, that's just completely bonkers to me. 31.7 is elite, elite. But as I mentioned, he is a very gifted athlete. He does very well in man press situations. Uh, He may be even better in zone coverage. And he is very comfortable, you know, when facing the quarterback. And and during the season, you know, you guys kept hearing me say that the Lions were failing when they were not facing the quarterback. And that means, you know, play in front, keep keep everything in front of you, preventing the big time explosive plays. So Hayden excels here. And his versatility to do both man press coverage, you know, or man press and coverage in zone, uh, it's really showing up in a big way. And you'll see it throughout the tape. And, and I hope it it transfers to the NFL. I really do. Is he a day one starter? Some teams probably. Um, but then again, maybe not. It, it depends on how crowded, you know, the DB room really is. I also think that he's highly undervalued right now. Um, the combine and the NFL pro days are definitely going to be some of his best friends. Uh, they're, they're particularly important for Hayden to showcase his ability. Um, but, you know, when your team needs another overhaul, which the Lions do, the, the DB room is it's bleak right now. Uh, I know Will Harris is a safety, but this guy's an upgrade over a Will Harris, you know, potentially could play safety at the next level, especially with his size. But then we've got Stephen Gilmore, um, you know, as our third cornerback options. Uh, that I don't like that room. That's just, I mean, currently we, we're in trouble, right? We have Cam Sutton as our cornerback one, and, and I think we all agree that he needs to slide over to number two. And the Lions need to bring, you know, in somebody during free agency that, that can help uh, solidify the number one spot. Then you've got Stephen Gilmore as quarterback two, and then Craig James um, as a reserve under, you know, under contract right now, reserve future. I thought Craig James was a meteorologist. I didn't know he played football too. That was a joke. Uh, the Lions will need to add two, two starters for sure and two backups to the final roster with Cam Sutton. So I expect the Lions to draft and sign free agents. Um, again, this season, I think it's the number one priority along with the defensive line and the offensive line as the main priorities. Here are my concerns. He had a season ending shoulder injury that resulted in surgery back in October of 2023, but he will be at the combine and all signs are pointing to that. He's going to participate. So he might be ready to go. Uh, I don't know all of the details as to what type of surgery he had. Um, but there was, uh, I think it was the Alabama game that he got banged up real early and, uh, and that, you know, his season was packed in at that point, his weaknesses. Uh, I mean, there might be more than what I saw. Uh, there might be more noted on other sites, but some had noted that he was a little panicky at times when he's running wide open downfield. And because of this, you know, he kind of had a rough go with being a bit handsy in 2022 that resulted in nine penalties but he had a much better showing in 2023. I mean, he really started to show who he was on the field and he only had two penalties in 2023. So I have this as a weakness for now uh, that he's a bit handsy and maybe a little bit out of control or panicky at times when he's running wide open downfield. And we'll need to see some consistency, you know, change with him that, you know, he's, he's worked this out of his system. Uh, I call it playing with hands in your pockets. If he can show us that he can play with his hands in his pockets and still defend at the next level, there is no way you're going to keep this guy off the field. Um, He's also a bit overly physical. And I know that sounds funny, but 
at times, you know, this may draw some dirty laundry just because of how physical he is. Um, coaching technique should definitely fix this. And, and I believe, you know, just working through it, he'll be fine. Uh, confidence is going to be the key here that he can do it without grabbing a hold of somebody and that he can run, you know, with them, adjacent to them, uh, mirror them like he does, you know, in, in a lot of the tape that you're going to see here in just a second. I don't like the fact that he's sometimes hesitant when he is in zone coverage. It's almost like he's a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger on whether he's going to, you know, come up, you know, and, and make a play uh, or when he has to take an angle. Uh, his route to the receiver or the running back or whomever he's in pursuit of, sometimes his angle is not as good as it should be. Uh, in conclusion here, I do believe it is a complete crime that this guy is right now a, a fifth round pick, uh, day three, fifth round pick. I have, you know, Hayden honestly considered as a will rock lock as a top 10 sleeper in this draft. This is my second lock of the season. I expect him to move into day two um, as late as a late third round pick. I'm sorry, as early as a late third round pick, as late as a fourth round pick, uh, mid fourth. I do believe that someone like the Lions, you know, would need to move up, move back into the fourth to snatch him. He's not going to make it to the fifth round. I guarantee it. Uh, the combine and the pro days, like I said, they're going to be very helpful for the rest of this evaluation. Remember, this is pre, pre combine. So some of this energy will change. Some of these, um, you know, locks that I call may change. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see how his, his pro day and his combine looks and we'll go from there. So that's all on um, Kamal Hayden. Let's get into some highlights.